friends, I hope you have been well. Lots and lots of topics in today's Dirt Report. I'm not sure if we have time for pleasantries. We are under attack, but you know the drill. Like the video if you did and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Now hide your computers, hide your phones, hide your smart fridges. It's dire times out there right now. A world full of dangers lurking at every www. And this week Australia got hit. We got hit hard targeting our government and businesses. We got hit right in the feels. You thought you were safe online because you didn't click on a singles in your area ad? Well, think again. But banner ads won't stop us talking news. So in today's show, we have a cyber warfare in Australia. The ACCC doesn't like exercise. Time to Ubernize NBN installs. Zoom, zoom. And in the small bites, we have Twitter allows you to literally tweet like a bird. Welcome to the Dirt Port. Let's start the biggest story that's still unraveling. However, it's been happening for a little while. What does that mean? The Australian government is and has been under a cyber attack by a certain state. Morrison won't say who just yet, but all articles and signs point to the Republic of Madagascar. Uh, hang on, wrong article. It's China. Of course it's China. Who else? North Korea? Their servers are still running Windows Millennial Edition. Uh, well, not really. I bet you didn't know that they developed their own operating system called Red Star OS. And of course it's called Red Star. What else? <laughs> and it's skinned to look like a Mac OS. Love it. Maybe one day I'll have a look at it. In any case, the other red state, China, is bored. After lying for months about COVID-19 and letting it slip out into the world, they're upset the rest of the world has some ill will towards them. I can't figure out why that would be so. An investigation? Maybe that's the way we should do it. Here is what Morrison had to say. This activity is targeting Australian organizations across a range of sectors, including all levels of government, industry, political organization, education, health, essential service providers, and operators of other critical infrastructure. He also added that we know it is a sophisticated state-based cyber actor because of the scale and nature of the targeting and the tradecraft used. Morrison has not yet named the state, and many outlets are pointing fingers at China due to the size and technical ability, but we should not discount Russia, though I think they are more preoccupied with re-electing Trump or just generally meddling like they do. Here is the thing, these attacks have been going on for a while. This isn't a major news story. The chief executive officer of the Cybersecurity Cooperation Research Center, Rachel Falk, chimed in to remind people to not use password as their password. Now, I have to be frank. Hi, I'm Frank, and I use the same password for all my online activity. The password is also easily guessed. I feel safe. Don't be like Frank. Listen to Rachel Falk. In an interview with the ABC, she said, while people may want to point fingers at particular countries, attributing blame was a distraction. It doesn't matter where it comes from, to be honest with you. This message, the Prime Minister was clear. Do what you need to do to protect your valuable business and personal data. Threats come from anywhere, every day of the week. The idea is simple. Keep up with your software updates and use a strong password. Better yet, two-factor authentication and a password manager too. So far, there has been no actual data breaches and the devils have just been knocking at heaven's door. Now, on the other side of the post, we have Telstra and Optus who are keen to keep their midnight romps with China friendly and ongoing. In fact, Telstra's Andy Penn had a few things to say after Morrison's statements. Our own monitoring confirms that the Prime Minister has said today, we have seen a significant increase in cyber attacks activity in recent weeks and we are on heightened alert for ourselves and for our customers and we are actively managing their risk. Cybersecurity is a large and growing area of risk for the security of the nation and COVID-19 has increased the risk with so many people working and studying from home away from traditional security measures. Also to add, what does it mean by traditional security methods? You mean a condom on the router or the pullout method? Penn continues, the Australian government deserves real credit for the leadership it is showing on cybersecurity. It is critical for our nation's security and economic growth. We continue to work closely with the relevant security agencies and our global partners to monitor and understand these threats to better protect our own data and networks and those of our customers. I am also working with the government as the chair of the industry advisor panel on its 2020 cybersecurity strategy, and we will be releasing our report in the coming weeks. I'm pretty interested to see the report. The thing is, Telstra has been in China since 1989. In fact, they serve up to 30% of Asia's internet traffic. And they were the first foreign company licensed to provide connectivity and network services on the mainland through their PBS joint venture. So there is money to be made and Telstra ain't going anywhere. 
Let me know in the comments below if you would like to see a video about how to best manage your online passwords. Let's move on to our next topic. And we know how Google's motto says do no evil, or at least don't let anyone see you doing evil. Well, this could be a play on both. Google is looking to snag up Fitbit for a cool 2.1 billion, and the ACCC is concerned it is just not happy. Under the deal, Fitbit will be joining Google itself, similar to like when they acquired Nest. It exists on its own, but will be part of Alphabet group of companies. This way, Google will be able to integrate new Fitbit devices deeper into their Android ecosystem and create competition for Apple's watch lineup. According to a separate press release issued by Fitbit, the company will still take privacy for health and fitness data seriously, noting that Fitbit health and wellness data will not be used for Google ads. Will that change in the future? Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe we won't know, but will it come as a surprise if it does? Probably not. Now, I'm not sure, but the fact that they mentioned it, they thought it would be a concern to people, and that's what the ACCC is focusing on. The argument the ACCC is using is the fact that Fitbit has been tracking health data for years, not just how many steps you do, but also your sleep and location information. For now, the ACCC is going to review the acquisition and will target the digital online advertiser services and data-dependent health markets. Then we will see if Fitbit's data has any potential value to Google. But at the end of the day, Google would have access to all this without any roadblocks. Here is what our fearless leader, Rod Sims, said. The ACCC Digital Platform Inquirer found that Google's substantial market power is built on its concentration of search and location data and data collected via third-party websites and apps. Past acquisitions by Google of both startups and mature companies like Fitbit have further entrenched Google's position. The access to user data available to Google has made it so valuable to advertisers that it faces only limited competition. To note, however, Fitbit is also connected to certain employers and insurers, giving them valuable data. In a post last year on the topic of Fitbit's acquisition, Rick Osterloh, Senior Vice President, Devices and Services, said this. Google aspires to create tools that help people enhance their knowledge, success, health, and happiness. This goal is closely aligned with Fitbit's long-time focus on wellness and helping people live healthier, more active lives. But to get this right, privacy and security are paramount. When you use our products, you're trusting Google with your information. After all, Google is the biggest provider of online ads, and that makes it quite concerning because after all, Google could favor its own devices over the competition on search results and that just wouldn't be fair, would it? Let's move on to our next topic and the NBN is taking notes from other services. This time around, it's an online booking system and you could end up booking an NBN service until just like an Uber. Well, maybe not. The new automated process will be able to reschedule appointments via an online tool. The system will give you two days to respond and the trial will run in July testing scheduling app via SMS and online. I might be exaggerating there, but the future looks kind of bright. NBN Co said that the system is a result of the COVID-19 and the lack of staff on hand to rebook appointments. But in my opinion, I think it's a way to fix the process that was broken before. You may remember we talked about a large number of missed appointments where times were not only inconvenient for the customer, but also NBN just didn't show up. Well, this will hopefully fix the inconvenient times issue. Not sure about the no-show, however, so we'll see how far that goes. So far, three RSPs have signed up to the test, so don't expect this to go live nationwide anytime soon. Once the feedback is back, expect this to be an opt-in system for the RSPs. Let me know in the comments below if being given a choice of a few different times and rescheduling is going to help, or is it kind of redundant? Let's jump into our small bites for this week. First of all, Zoom has finally caved in and will be providing end-to-end -end encryption to both paid and free users. And honestly, I found it insane that they didn't do that already, as Zoom is used across the world. Many IT managers ban the use of Zoom in their own companies due to the security risk. You would think Zoom would add their security feature to keep their paying customers happy and their paying customers paying. In a blog post, Zoom CEO Eric Yoon said, since releasing the draft design of Zoom's end-to-end -end encryption on May 22nd, we have engaged with civil liberties organizations, our Cisco Council, child safety advocates, encryption experts, government representatives, our own users, and others to gather their feedback on this feature. We have also explored new technologies to enable us to offer E22E to all tiers of users. All I can say is, took you long enough. Let me know below, will this mean your company will get back to using Zoom? Or have you found salvation in something else like so next up, Twitter. Twitter is, so next up, 
Twitter and tweeting and all that good stuff. Twitter is adding a new way to tweet, this time with a short audio message. Twitter product design Mayor Patterson said sometimes 280 characters aren't enough and some conversational nuances are lost in translation. So starting today, we're testing a new feature that will add a more human touch to the way you use Twitter, your very own voice.